in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there are many people who will not look for your trouble. They really are very sincere people. In fact, wonderful, but they are still going to hell. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, not we are the way. There are many ways, but there is only one. Jesus, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, he says, cometh to the Father except by me. Jesus also said, I am the door. What does that mean? The authorized access into the kingdom. If you claim you are in the kingdom and you followed another door that is not Jesus, number one, you are in a wrong place. Because if you jump through the fence and you enter my house, you are in my house but you are not welcome. You are most likely a thief. Am I right on that? The way into my house is not the fence. Mm -mm. The door is the authorized access. Jesus also said, I am the good shepherd. He says the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. You need to know all the things Jesus said he was and he is. As far as your salvation is concerned. So Paul was teaching his son Timothy and he says God desires that all men, that includes your spouse, all men, that includes your driver, all men, that includes your workers, all men, all men be saved. And then when salvation the matter of new birth is sorted we can now delve into other areas so you see that salvation is very important but as important as new birth is please let me have your attention as important as new birth is it is not the ultimate of the believer's journey it is only an initiation it begins the process of walking in the kingdom are we together the next assignment for any believer that gets saved is not just to keep his Bible and come to church just ordinarily and go back and say, after all, I'm a Christian. There is need for efficiency. So the Bible says the second desire, that means when you are saved, you've satisfied one great desire in the heart of God for you. The second desire is that the same all men, that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. Because you see, this life you have received and this kingdom that we are part of, excelling in it is knowledge dependent. Please, if you are writing, write that down. That excelling in the kingdom is knowledge dependent. You can fail and fail so woefully that it does not, there, there, does, there will not seem to be anything in your life that is an advantage of eternal life because of ignorance. Your next assignment is to be on a pursuit, a campaign to damage spiritual ignorance. Now, this leads me to the discussion on darkness. Let's talk a bit about darkness. The word darkness is a very interesting word. The first mention of it is found in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis 1 verse 2. 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, it says, And the earth was without form, watch this now, and void, and darkness, this is the first mention of the word darkness, was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3 now says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So from scripture, we see that the first assignment as far as bringing beauty and glory to the earth is concerned was to do something about darkness. Watch this. Are we together now? Yes. 
for as long as there was darkness nothing else could happen the issue of man and creation and nature it could not even be appreciated when god came to the scene the first thing he did was darkness you need to go and the moment darkness departed then every other thing could come and that was the first time we began to see the mention and it was good and it was good because darkness was no longer there and it was good god made this in light and it was good the word darkness in scripture connotes many many meanings but two essentially number one darkness is always related to ignorance please write that down darkness according to scripture is always related to ignorance the definition of darkness is the absence of light always related to ignorance number two darkness is always connected to evil so every time you no know, in most cases except for a few exceptions whenever you read about darkness in scripture it talks about ignorance and then number two it talks about evil in its entirety in whatever form or fashion hallelujah and you know from scripture and even from science that in the presence of darkness there are many negative effects for instance darkness affects vision if the lights in this entire auditorium were put off you will not be able to see is that true yes with your eyes sound and correct you will still not be able to see or see properly so darkness affects vision number two darkness affects speed think of what happens to your headlamp in the night assuming you're on your way from any location in lagos to any location and then for whatever reason maybe a fuse or something goes bad and your headlamp does not work it doesn't matter whether you are driving a bentley a rolls royce a golf a bus it does not matter at that point the deciding factor as far as your speed is concerned is not the quality of the make of the vehicle the absence of light can limit you you will have to slow down and hope that you will arrive home safely and may god help you that it's not raining with thunder and all kinds of things are we together darkness affects speed that means when you dwell in the realm of darkness you will crawl your way through destiny and never be able to do anything that is of substance and of worth and this is the case with so many people they have the advantage of days but no accomplishments captured in their days calendar years keep coming and recycling again and again and there is nothing constructive at all but one of the most disturbing effects of darkness is that darkness alters identity in the presence of darkness you cannot really know who is who a light-skinned person may carry an interpretation like a dark person are we together a male can look like a female a, an old woman who deserves respect can look like a child you can mistaken a small child for an adult there is always confusion in the presence of darkness you cannot accord the honor that is due men in darkness that reminds me of the story of Jacob that should be Genesis 29 when you read from verse 22 it was in darkness that that exchange was that exchange happened having worked for Laban for his wife his wife based on his desire was Rachel but drama happened because there was darkness remember that story the man got up in the morning when light came and said what is this I really wonder what happened that you, you can imagine what darkness happened I mean darkness happened to that man and in his mind he thought that he was with Rachel only for him to wake up in the morning and say what have you done to me did I not serve you for Rachel he said you have beguiled me because of darkness darkness can misrepresent you you are a king and a priest but darkness can give you another identity that is far from what God has said you are darkness can make you look weak darkness can make you look limited it can alter your identity no wonder the bible says in psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand 
they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes how many great champions have been bound by darkness look at the madman in gadara that man was a great evangelist but look what the kind of identity till today we do not know his name except we research through history darkness was so much upon him there was no mention of the name his mother gave him only god knows how many people would have been called named after that great evangelist but darkness simply called him the madman in gadara is that a name was the man not healed why did his name change if when we are talking about the man who saved many we still call him the madman in gadara hallelujah darkness can create all kinds of names the woman with the issue of blood huh the crippled man at bethesda darkness gives people names that their parents did not give them that god did not give them what of the name ichabod no mother would name a child like that only one mention of a, a woman who was angry at the situation of her child and named him jabez and the gentleman said no oh that that would just bless me i can't carry this stigma this is not me i'm saying this because for someone here you came for this conference what you see in your dreams and visions is not what is appearing in your dreams and visions and by prophecy that they told you there were certain prophecies upon your life as you were born but there is absolutely nothing like it today in your life a prophecy of glory a prophecy of grace a prophecy of greatness but what is happening in your life now is like that rejected stone people use you to counsel others to say if you must fail don't even be like so 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 and so in the name of jesus i don't know who has carried that shame and that reproach in your life i call upon my god that that reproach must leave your life permanent <laughs> hallelujah there was a man in the bible in john chapter 5 are we still together the Bible says that man was lying down close to a pool called Bethesda for 38 years. No friend, supposedly no family members. Didn't a woman give birth to him? This is what darkness can do to men. Left the man alone for 38 years. I'm sure people would pass and tell their children who were now adults. Remember when you were born, we passed and this man was here. And they say, ah, daddy, but this man is still there till now. And people just nod their head and pass. And one time, a stranger just walks up to him. And Jesus said, why are you in this condition? What can I do for you? And he said, I have no man. Darkness can take away good people from your life. Job, who was the wealthiest man in the East. Please listen carefully. The wealthiest man in the East. He had all kinds of people, herds and children. The moment his children died and everything left him, his relatives, his family members, everybody deserted him. The last and only person who was standing with him was his wife. There are some of you right now, when you call your son name, people are surprised while you are in that situation. Because there are so many people connected to you in the place of influence, but darkness has made people to reject you. And you've been isolated and left alone. Tonight you have come to know the truth. In the name of Jesus, the assignment of the truth is to make you free. Every time I read about the madman in Gadara, I feel so sad. The Bible says the man caught himself, lacerating himself day and night, bound by these wicked spirits. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I was in Port Harcourt, and I remember going, it was a company, I was to meet someone there, and true story, the woman, I think one of the women, she was dressed, you know, these security companies that were outsourced, and I remember just asking her to help me reach someone and let the person know that I have come, you know, as we're having an appointment with him, 
and I looked at the woman, she sounded so brilliant, and God is my witness. The woman told me that she was wrapping up her PhD. Now, now, not to insult the job, but not for that status. This is what darkness can do. It can alter your identity. That when someone looks at you, he says, you were, when you were 20 years, you were full of life. I thought by now you would have done great things for the kingdom. What reduced you to look like yesterday? This is the case with many people. Darkness can truly alter your identity. That the glory and the grace that should emanate from your life is no longer seen. And people look at you and it's like you are a testament of woes and reproach. So when Jesus, when God said, let there be light, that is a real miracle. Let there be light means let your tears come to an end. Let there be light. Listen, let there be light means that the reign of darkness over your life misrepresenting you. Whose house are you going to? This woman, don't go there. If you want to make it, don't go near that house. There is a spirit in that house that anybody that enters there goes down and people begin to avoid you. There are many of you, you are carrying, you know, pastor said something in joking in passing that there were two kinds of boats in the Bible and there were two men that entered that boat. Somebody entered the boat. He didn't insult anybody. He didn't look for trouble. He just carried a spirit into the boat. And people started going down. They lost their properties. They lost everything. Another person was in the boat and it was, both of them were sleeping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Darkness. Darkness represents evil in its entirety. I have seen families with graduates for many years that none of them can earn up to 10, 20,000 in a month. And you will see a woman who labored and gave birth to children, handsome gentlemen, beautiful ladies, and yet no door opens. Darkness is dangerous. Listen, as we begin to pray tonight, make sure you don't keep quiet. Get angry and say, this thing has to leave my life. This reproach that has come upon my life that is called darkness. The woman with the issue of blood. Is that a name? The madman in Gadara. Is that a name? No. Every child is named at birth. What happened to these people that their problems replaced their names? That's what darkness can do. It can carry your problem and replace your name. A name that means beauty and color. Yeah, people will forget your identity and tie you to something. That family where nobody rises. That family where all the ladies is like they're a cause. They come into the life of any man, he goes down. That family where the gentlemen and the women and the, No, no. You have to insist that light will come to change that identity. For as long as it was darkness, listen. Jacob did not know which was Leah or Rachel, but when it was morning, the arrival of light he could see clearly. Hallelujah. When you tolerate darkness in your life, you will live a defeated Christian life. I told you that darkness in scripture essentially represents ignorance and evil that means the assignment of light is to deal with these two things to deal with evil but to deal with ignorance most believers only focus on the evil part the evil spirits but they do not focus on the fact that darkness is also ignorance you can cast a spirit in one moment you don't cast ignorance in one moment are we together with one declaration in the name of jesus an evil spirit that has tormented individuals can go, but it is a process to drive darkness as ignorance. And many believers do not have the discipline to stay and get the truth that brings them liberty indeed. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth that you know and you engage by faith is what will set you free. That the truth can make men free. Are we together? Are we learning now? How do you know 
the presence of darkness in your life by searching around for every aspect in your life that is inconsistent with what the word of God said should be it tells you that there might be darkness roaming around them. any aspect of your life that is inconsistent with the written word inconsistent with the spoken word must be an area of immediate project because it only tells you that darkness is roaming around there this is a call to take responsibility listen carefully when you tolerate darkness you permit it to grow i hope you know darkness can grow yes sir the bible says for darkness shall cover the earth that is a level then when it grows it becomes gross darkness the people it first comes as darkness but when you permit it to complacency and giving of excuses it now begins to grow until it is called gross darkness so isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you he says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee Amen. hallelujah Amen. praise the name of the lord so i want you to settle it for a fact before we begin to deal with all the aspects of the kingdom that the bible calls light it's important for you to know that the limiting factor in the life of many people is either number one they are not saved or number two if and when they are saved then there is the reign of darkness in their lives darkness as the manifestation of satanic forces evil spirits wicked spirits or darkness as ignorance most likely both when you want to deal with darkness it takes more than administering deliverance you can cast the spirit but if your mind is not transformed are we together now you are still in darkness spirits are not the only tests of darkness ignorance is also darkness even if when there is no spirit there and when there is ignorance there the spirits can still return because darkness will invite them your ignorance will give them the access to come back again if you're understanding what i'm teaching you say amen, amen. so apostle where do i start from that you are unsaved you need jesus in a hurry when that decision is made then the next decision is to be ready and to be willing to embrace the ministry of the holy spirit to embrace the word of god and then to begin a radical journey of enlightenment enlightenment ephesians chapter 1 please from verse 16. i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers he says that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you help me the spirit of wisdom in the revelation and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints 19 now and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power where do i start from the determination to eradicate darkness in all forms and fashion and it starts number one by commanding by the blood of jesus and by the name that these spirit influences that have come to represent doom and darkness in and around your life and that one you will experience it in this conference but then the responsibility of launching a merciless campaign against darkness darkness dwelling as ignorance the bible says in hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened you see it there 
Ephesians 4 18 being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts there are many miracles in the Bible that the, the Bible will record that there were places Jesus did not heal them did not heal all he healed some there were places the Bible say he healed all but I have studied my Bible and there was no blind man in scripture who met Jesus and went without healing Jesus took the subject of blindness personal to a point that he prayed for one person twice Jesus will hardly pray for one person twice if he met you once that was it but he was insistent on seeing that a man's blindness left him he prayed for him and said how is the situation now he said I see but it's not clear I see he said no I will not tolerate that little darkness left I will still pray again I see men like trees he said no men are not trees they can be like trees but they are not trees he prayed for him again Jesus had zero tolerance for darkness are we together light why are things not working in my life I love the Lord with all my heart but what is the key to an excelling life what is the key to dominion what is the key to a life of grace what is the key to longevity what is the key to breaking free from these yokes of darkness it's not my fault that I was born from the family I was born from must I suffer the limitations because I was born there there has to be a way to liberty ladies and gentlemen please hear me just because you have dwelt around darkness for a long time does not mean that light cannot set you free let me give you an example that many of you who listen to my teachings have given these examples time and again imagine with me a room that has been dark for six years you have that in your mind dark for six years no one has put the bulb on imagine another room that has been dark since last year no one entered that room two rooms now imagine a room that has been dark since last week no one tried to put the light on imagine a room that has been dark since this morning so we have four rooms now many years six years one year ago one week ago a few hours ago now assuming there is a central command that switches on the bulbs when you switch on the bulb and it's supposed to affect all four rooms which of the rooms will be lit first help me that means no matter how long the room has been dark if it is authentic light that comes the timing the longevity of the darkness does not matter if that room is not lit something is wrong I just dramatized John 1 5 for you for the Bible says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there has never been a time when light and darkness sat down to discuss and negotiate. The presence of true light is the immediate exit of darkness. Do you believe this? When I found this key, I became a student of light. I said I would take responsibility for my life and no matter how long it would take I will be a student of scripture until I eradicate darkness darkness that can tie a glorious and a beautiful life and render you to be helpless and look hopeless you need to take responsibility apostle are you aware of the kind of darkness and witchcraft and wickedness in my family I assure you it is because true light has not come there when true light comes you will see the power that raised Christ from the dead over principalities and witches listen you know when people talk about of course I understand that people are in pain and sometimes they say apostle I know that you've been doing this thing but you don't know the kind of problem in my family and I say you think so do you know the kind of problem that was in my own family everybody met problem there are no there are no empty mountains there are always giants on every mountain so because you met your own giant and we've killed our own don't make a mistake and think when you see a clean mountain warfare happened there well there were giants that were subdued there are no empty mountains anywhere every family had devils somewhere if you find them silent they were made to be quiet 
it says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together because sometimes we don't contend for life that brings victory because we like to attract sympathy and say my case is a special case i submit to you by the authority of scripture that there have been nobody's case was worse than job's case in the bible at least not in modern history that i know that in one day look at the tragedy that came to a, a man's life your children your estates your business in one day he was the headline everywhere job some will say that that power you went to collect now it has finally caught up with you and then as if that was not enough then boils began to come out imagine you were married to such a man people will look at you and advise you you are still here this guy is already dead don't blame her for saying curse god and die would she spend the rest of her life there and job said no problem you can say all you want to say but all the days of my appointed time i will wait but i love i love job chapter 42 and verse 10. he says and god restored this is the god we're talking about god turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends and the lord gave job twice as much as he had before that for someone by december when you come here for service your testimony will be your tears of joy in the name of jesus the son of the living god Do you believe this? God is able to turn the lives of men around. Don't get too used to darkness. It's been there for 20 years, but let light come and you see what will happen. And you see the, the, the product of light. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. When it comes, it can do a quick work. I know that you should have had a job for 10, 20 years, but in one day, God can give you a job that is equivalent to 10 people's job. You see, the thing with God is that light comes in its various dimensions. It can come as restoration. It can come as healing. It can come as breakthrough. It can come as favor. It can come as speed. It is still light. I just named the many things that will start happening to you from tonight for someone is speed for someone is restoration in the name of Jesus the son of the living God praise the name of the Lord but the responsibility of crying and praying for light is your personal responsibility are we together now yes you have to be angry with your current position you have to be angry with the fact that your life has been ineffective as far as bringing glory to god and insist to take responsibility that every area that looks like darkness in my life list it down take responsibility this is beyond just hearing a sermon this finance this wicked evil satanic dreams this disfavor upon my life that someone vows to bless me and then I go to his office and it's as if something came upon him to forget what is the secret of favor what is the secret of speed what is the secret of restoration how do I have five children and not one of them is risen and strong and able to bless me yet Psalm 112 said blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth and the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever you take that responsibility hallelujah the Bible says ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free john 17 17 sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so the truth that translates as light and liberates the saints please hear me i'm trying to be as simple as possible because i want everybody to understand the truth that the bible calls light is the word of god but when you hear the word of God, the word of God means many things. Number one, the word of God 
is truth as revealed from scripture the word of god also represents the speakings of god to you are we together now yes so both the spoken word and the written word are profitable to give us stature to bring us liberty and to help us to command triumph and dominion in experience light for instance deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 light is coming now and it shall come to pass if thou joshua selman shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the lord to do and to observe all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord thy god will set you on high listen to me the first time i read this scripture i was in one room and i believed it i believed it i believed it i believe it with all my heart that if a man believes the word of the lord and finds the secret that lifts men you can be lifted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you let's list the blessings i hope you are learning please give it to us blessed shall thou be in lagos is that not the name of your city so why is everything rejecting you in lagos why why is everybody running away from you why you may be a man of god but why is everything you are sincere you are working with integrity loving the lord but it looks like nothing is working blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field next verse blessed shall be the fruit of your body please mother say amen that means no woman is permitted to suffer and give birth to an arm robber or to give birth to a prostitute or a troublemaker that is plaguing society the bible says the fruit of your body is blessed Amen. blessed is the fruit of your ground Amen. regardless the economic situation this is what light says listen you don't you don't agree when you see it you agree with god in believing and engage his word to see things change verse 5 blessed shall be thy basket and thy store yeah. verse 6 now blessed shall thou be when thou comest in yeah. and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out yeah. i wish i had time we can spend a whole day on this scripture there are people who are only blessed when they go out they are not blessed when they come in there are people who are only blessed when they are in they are never blessed when they go out the bible says a man who is truly blessed must be blessed when he comes in and blessed when he goes out whether you are in lagos you are in us you are in canada you are in america you are in your village for 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 as long as you are the one moving the bible says that blessing must follow you and we saw that in the life of abraham when lot left and went to settle near sodom the lord told him from where thou art lift up your eyes northwards eastward that everywhere your soul you know your eyes see it shall be given it's not like a vision that i, I mean what kind of thing how can i be preaching in the name of the lord and then i'm done preaching they obey me in church and oppress me in my room what sort of authority is this i knew that my authority was not it was not yet established and i had to go and and fish out scriptures like arrows there has to be a way behold i give you authority power over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy are we together that we have been exalted with christ far above principalities powers every name thrones dominions yes sir i put these things together and i meditated upon them i believed it i remember very clearly that night when the light entered my spirit i didn't pray and ask the spirits to go i pleaded with them i said show up again till till tomorrow they have not come let me tell you ladies and gentlemen i don't mean to brag but darkness only looks bold when it meets ignorance there is a level of light illumination that shines upon your heart you will see how cheap satan is hallelujah 
Oh, nobody rises in Lagos. If you don't know this man and this man, you will not rise. That is what darkness is as bold as your ignorance makes it look. If you go for knowledge, you can rewrite the things that people say. The things I'm telling you by the grace of God, I've proven it with my own life. So I'm not just here to waste your time and give you cunningly devised fables. This is true. Are we together? When light comes, it brings with it confidence. You know that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. The Bible says, Gentiles shall come to my light. When I read it, I believed it. So I kept looking out for Gentiles until they came. And the Bible says it's not only Gentiles, even their kings will come. And I said, let me prepare because their kings are coming. This is what I, listen, your spiritual reality is dependent on the light, the truth that comes to you, that you know, you understand, and you believe. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.